Patrick McNeil back here with you at the intermission. And because it is coming up on the QMJHL trading period, that'd be a great idea to check in with the Eagles general manager, Jack Carrier. Jack, I'll start off with the general one. How much of the call has been heating up as the trading period nears? To tell you the truth, it's been pretty quiet so far. I'm in Saguenay right now for the CCM Challenge in La Bay, and this is usually where things sort of start to ramp up. Most of the GMs make it to this tournament first to watch the players that they have that play in, in Major Midget, and second to start the talks with the other GMs. So it's usually when it starts to ramp up. Is that tournament just for the Quebec teams, or are you getting a chance to see other players as well? It was for the Quebec and Maritimes. There were five teams from the Maritimes that were scheduled to attend, but because of new COVID restrictions within the Maritime province, they had to pull out. So it's too bad. The Sydney Rush was coming up, so we would have really liked to see them against the Quebec team, and I think they would have liked to measure themselves against the Quebec teams. Quite a few of our affiliate players were going to be here as well. Moncton Flyers were going to be here with Luke Patterson and Xavier Farah and the Rush with Preston Pattengale, Luke Fraser, and Tyson the Friends. So those would have been great opportunities for those those guys but it probably was a bummer for them to hear that 12 hours before their departure for this tournament in Quebec that uh, they wouldn't be able to come in and compete just a number of disappointments around the sporting world and we're going to talk about Eagles prospects later on ordinarily the main topic heading into the trading period will be players but I guess with the Eagles right now it's the coaching situation how involved are you in the hunt for the new head coach is that divided between you and Gerard is there a timeline what do you know or do you even know anything at all yet it's all kind of out of the blue I guess We've been working on it pretty hard. We've established a profile of what we've put together, a coach selection committee, established a coach profile. We have some pretty good resumes that have come in. We're looking at all those, and hopefully when we return from the Christmas break, we'll be able to make a decision. Speaking of the coaches, prior to you being the main GM, Marc-Andre Dumont was in charge, and he was both head coach and GM. Now, since you've taken over, how much communication is there on a day-to-day basis with the coaches regarding players, regarding roster developments and trades and whatnot? And has that changed, I guess, with Jake Grimes' departure? It's crucial. It's crucial. You have to be in, in constant communication with your coach, whether it be with, with regards to who you're going to line up that evening, who's doing what, how practices are going, what the affiliate needs are, whatever the case might be. A day-to-day routine. And the coach is spending a lot of time with the players on the bench, on the ice, knows the ins and outs of the players. So uh, definitely something that you have to keep good communication with your coach. That's definitely You look at this team now, it's at the bottom of the league, which isn't surprising because it is a younger team. Is it fair to say this is a selling trading period or is that still kind of up in the air depending on what's out there and whatnot? There are some years where you know that you're a buyer. For instance, two years ago, we knew we were buyers. We went ahead and got Xavier Bouchard, Tyler Allen, Sean Element. We're getting ready for a good run. We definitely know we're not there this year. We're not going to be in major buying mode. However, when we do buy, the players we're going to come in are going to be players that are going to fit within our, our age group and that are, are going to help us moving forward fitting in that age group. Gerard Shaw had been vocal. He sees this team as a team aiming to contend in 2023-2024. Keeping that in mind, if you were getting offers on elite 18-year-old players that may not be in the league, they might be in the league next year, but not the year after that. Is that something you consider doing? Everything will be on the table, right? We're going to try to make this team better. However, what you have to consider is whether the players that are 18 right now are going to play as 20-year-old when that run comes around. These are all things that myself and the hockey operation group are pondering and looking at and checking the value of all of our players. Now, you look at that year specifically, you'd have to think F.J. Buto would be a star 19-year-old. D presumably would have a very good starting goalie because you have two good 17s as well now. But, of course, you're looking at teams like Halifax, Drummondville, Gatineau that are very strong in that 2004 group. Do you feel this team can get up to compete with those teams? It's going to depend on what kind of trades we're going to make. And I think we have also a very good group of 2005. So 23-24 could be a stepping stone for us to maybe try to make it in in 24-25. It's something we're going to have to look at. Do you get the sense, not just with your organization, but around the league, how much has long-term planning been altered by everything that's gone on in the last two years? Has there been a seismic change with how teams plan, or is it just kind of getting back to normal now? It's been incredible, Pat. It's been an incredible change. It's an every day, every hour adjustment. For instance, look at the prices that were paid at the trade deadline at Christmas two years ago. We were one of the team that paid the good prices that were required for those players, hoping to sell those players the year after, hoping to get some of your uh, return back on some of those players. And last year, the trade period was just completely incredible and tough to monitor. Some teams that were going to go didn't go because they were afraid of COVID and rightfully so, right? I think it's a fair question to ask what's it going to do to this trading period now, knowing what we know 
today, what's that going to do? I don't know. I don't have a clue. We'll have to let a bit of water go under the bridge and see what it does in, in the next week. But to answer your question, it's been absolutely sending everybody into a, a tornado, not always knowing what's going to come at the end. That's interesting to point out because I was more thinking generally, but you're right. What's happened in Nova Scotia the last few days, I'm sure, would certainly kind of give teams pause and hopefully there gets to be a normal second half of the season. Now, we mentioned it's been a tough year on the ice, but I think one positive has been that whenever the team has needed to call someone up, Patterson, Pattengale, and Dag, all three of those guys to me look like you guys when they're playing would there be any consideration of those being permanent call-ups for the second half and maybe tell us about some other guys in the organization that are doing well in their respective leagues right now we're going to see what's going to happen pat where trades are going to take us if we're going to lose any assets from our roster does that make for any room for any other players we don't have the exact answer to that we'll know more in the next couple weeks once the trade deadline fully opens and teams are fully involved into it. However, you're right. We are very pleased with the way our affiliates have done when they've come up. They've done very well for us when they came up. Definitely players we hope are going to be part of our future moving forward. I mentioned those three have been called up, but obviously there's a lot of other picks that didn't get a chance to crack the team. Has anybody else in the organization stood out this season? I know you probably haven't been able to see everybody as much as usual. We haven't been able to see everybody. It would be unfair to call out some names sure. right now. I, I think we have quite a few guys that are doing very well within their respective league. The scouts have been producing reports on them and whatnot, so we'll see what happens with the future of those guys with the team. Should be a competitive camp and also have a number of picks next year, too, so that should make things pretty fun, I would think. Drummondville was just in town last time we talked. You were talking about the number two pick that ends up going there. I guess we could say it ends up working out to be Pedal for Perron, Squires, and Shortle. Pedal's obviously putting up eye-popping numbers. Perron was capped at U17. Walk us through how that trade played out, and are you happy with how things are so far, although it's early on, obviously, with the guys being 16. There was no doubt in our mind that Tyler Paddle was an elite player. However, what we wanted to do with that second pick was that we wanted to be convinced that the player we're going to pick at number two was going to play, was going to wear the jersey, was going to be an eagle. We didn't want to end up with situations like we've had in the past with, not to name anybody, but Nick Roy. A situation like that where your first overall pick is sacrificed, the player doesn't report. You get a pretty good return on the player, but sometimes you got to be careful with those things. Uh, there's compounding factors that, that could happen from decisions like that. We had some good meetings with the Petal family. We had some good meeting with Tyler himself, with Tyler and his parents. We rolled out the red carpet for him. We were ready to make a commitment to him. We wanted him to be an eagle. There was always the U.S. option that was sort of popping up and rearing its head. Like I said, we wanted to pick a player that was going to be in our lineup starting this year. I talked to Phil Boucher this week and when he spoke with the pedals he had basically the same reaction he was of the same opinion he wasn't 100 percent sure that tyler pedal was going to be in the league it was nothing against the eagles it was nothing against anybody else it's just that he wanted to look at the avenue in in the u.s we needed someone to wear that jersey I think that with the return we got from Tyler Paddle, I think is a very fair return. I think ML Perron will be a very good player in our league. Cam Squires will be a very good player in our league. I think uh, Connor Shortall is helping us very much right now. That's how this all unfolded. I mentioned, too, I feel like Neil Perron, I'm not sure your perspective from afar, but it seemed like the moment he was named to that U17 team, he really kind of seemed to step up his game. No doubt about this. When you're selected to go to Team Canada, you answer a call and you go there and you play the best hockey you can. And I was in touch with some of the Hockey Canada executive. I knew that ML was doing very well out there. I was told that he would be part of the leadership group. What a thing for a young hockey player. Be promoted to Hockey Canada, but also to be the captain of your team at Hockey Canada. It's such a boost for your spirit, for your morale, for the way you play the game. Emil went there, built a confidence in the 7 to 10 days he was there. And now he's back with us, and he's going to be a very active part and very important part of our future. Yeah, it'll be fun to watch his developments. Tough for 16-year-old D, especially in this league. Of course, I mentioned earlier the two goaltenders pretty much been going start for start, and we've seen some good stuff from both of them. Tough on a young team, for sure, so they faced a lot of shots. Is there a timeline, I guess, on when you would pick a guy, or how comfortable are you with just riding with both of them? Scotty Guthrow, our goalie coach, is very happy with the way the two goalies are performing. Right now, they're in prove-yourself mode. they got to prove to us who deserves the net more than the other. and They're still developing. They're just 17. We'll look at them as they get older, but right now we're we're in evaluation mode, that's for sure. Both will be very good goalies in our league. 
no doubt about this. They both have potential to be number one. They both will be number one in this league, so we'll see where that takes the Eagles. It's an happy problem to have some teams in, in the league right now. I've got two second goalies. Some of them have like a first goalie and their backup. They'd like to improve on that. So we're very lucky that we have two young goalies, but two very good young goalies. Yeah, as I said, it's been fun to watch. There's going to be rough nights, but that's just the case of being a 17-year-old goaltender in the queue. Obviously, you can't tell us any particulars, but I know negotiations are made ahead of the trade deadline. Are there any trades that are already made or close to being made without Um, naming the trades themselves? No, I don't have anything made right now. I'm in discussions with some GMs, but uh, like I said, it hasn't been volatile yet. It it hasn't flamed up. It's going to start this weekend. I guess, too, the in-person, it's a lot easier to negotiate these types of things? That's for sure. Well, we'll look forward to that this weekend. I know you're going to have a lot on your plate between managing and scouting because, as you said, it's a big weekend on the scouting side as well. So hopefully everything goes well. Great insight as always, Jack. Really appreciate you taking some time, and Best of luck with everything going forward. Thank you very much, Pat. That's Eagles General Manager Jack Carrier. He's a busy guy, so we appreciate him taking time out to talk to us ahead of this weekend. You're listening to the intermission of Uniglass Plus, Cape Breton Eagles Hockey, 1270 CJCB.